Spawning in the vest. This guy is the best as he takes orcs on Friedrich Panos home map. This is Rebeluk. He's going for the Goblin Shaman with a 4 lumber mill and single hunting cabin build. On the other side, we've got the one and only in the red playing the dwarves. This is Jasir. And not just any Jasir, he has been tasered, as his username states. That's intense. He's got a totem of flames. Whoa. Whoa, what? What is going on? Why is he going totem? He's got scatter shot ammunition, obviously. Um, interesting layout, moving the stone of homecoming as well. Rebel Luke going for the quick standard. Pull the creeps, and yeah, that will reduce the walking time very nicely. Goes on the other side of the cutthroat archer, so it doesn't run away, because it certainly has a tendency to do so. Immediately will be able to upgrade the clan standard, which is fantastic. Smashes that guy hard. Well, the War Rider's already around the stone. I don't know, I would have really liked some kind of play to go after these. And maybe he will do that. I mean, if he just picks up this sector and immediately goes with the Goblin to, to harass, that would be actually really sick with the Totem of Sparks plus the Chain Lightning. You can do a ton of damage against these Dwarves. Like, why isn't he going there? I guess he wants more sectors. But you can play tall, and there's still some buildings to make in the main, so... Yeah, upgrading these two bases... Uh, I guess he can go here first, and that uh, yeah, at least has four sectors. Just here, place the fire totem here. He's cautious about his stone, as he should be. Obviously, the dwarves always have to go, like, free stone cutters. They don't super have to, but it's the most efficient. Um, you kind of gimp yourself if you don't. Anyway, he's got the triple stone paw. Uh, one of them is already done. A second one will start soon enough once he has the food for it. But, oh, yeah. Very early start to it. Uh, instead of making a lot of axe wielders, he's got the zero axe wielder strat right now. It looks like Rebeluk is choosing to go wide as opposed to uh, harassing and tall. I don't know. It's interesting, but... All right. I'm not sure it's the best optimal play. Doesn't matter necessarily. I mean, orcs are really good here, and if they can get the huge production count, maybe it'll work. Who knows? We'll see. Um, for Drusir, we have got kill shots, so... Yeah, he's not going like full totems or anything insane. Axular is uh, pissing off the bear. Situation is literally dire. Yo. Vegan's absolutely nobody. Goes after the workers now though. Mother Nature 1, Revolute 0. Ah! Saves it! By removing the lumber mill. It's intense. What has he got? Exactly. Just the one war rider. He's not. He's producing some scoundrel now to deal with this. Should be able to get a fairly quick level five if he just jumps between all of the. Yeah, this is good pathing. So you can pick up this one outpost, and he gets a godstone here somewhere. I think it's like up here. Yeah, there with the stones, and he can just teleport back up. So, two birds, one taser. I mean, two bears. I right, guess the bear now. Almost got weakened, but I'm not sure it matters much as he gets the heal up in a moment. Just needs to pull back that one dude. Oh god. There it is. 
Okay, thanks to bear without losses. That's good. And upgrade this for a tier post. Do we have any... Oh, Drosir makes the other bear mad too. Uh, Reb Luke should come back here and he'll almost have level 5. But the question is, will Drosir be able to steal these creeps over here? Because that would be fantastic. What? We got a totem of silence. Yo. What's going on? The totem of silence applies in feeble and weakened, by the way. Uh, and he's also got bone breaker. Yeah, that's that's it. Whoops. All right. we'll be fast. Well, with the second bear, things will get a lot better. Uh, the Goebbels are going after the Mole Rider. I don't know about this. Seems to me the Shaman will be taking some heavy hits from the Dire Bear. And Taser Drosir already has Charburners, of course. That was Charburner, actually. Oh, what is this? Quadstone Cutter? I thought that was a hunting cabin. They look so similar, but no, it is a stone cutter here. Thank you for pointing it out, Fluxton. Much appreciated. I completely missed that, actually. Rebel Luke is level 4. If he takes these creeps, he'll be level 5, but... Jasir did pull them away. Uh, no hero here, however, so they should be still here. Yeah. So yeah, Drosir now has the weakening. And goes early sentries. Very, very interesting playstyle. I wonder if this helps. I mean, the Totem of Silence I can totally get behind. It's the fire one that is like, eh. It doesn't scale. So after a while it becomes completely irrelevant. But the Totem of Silence it at least stays relevant somewhat. But it still has a health. You can still kill it. Not the best skill overall. Uh, just here is going to have a quick level 5 pathing. He's also got these still, so... This will be pretty good. Rebel Luke at almost level 5, just needs these bottom guys. Um, yeah. Scoundrel are really low in number. He's got Risen Karak, so I suppose he wants to go Hunters. This is not that goblin heavy at all. Not sure what he needed tier 2 for, but he's heavily mining iron already. Uh, not actually that heavily. Just a little bit. Fair enough. Here in the bottom we can mine some as well. Oh, there's some here as well. So yeah, lots to go around. Just here, not on level 5 yet. So what does he have? He has got five, 4 axular, 7 sentries, and double stone hall. Yeah, probably not gonna get that. Frontier post now. Yeah, just here has a lot of negative stone. Ay ay ay. What's all that going into though? I don't understand. Where is he building? He's gonna take a Vivern. Without his actual level 5, okay. That's interesting. I mean the totem of silence will help. But Rebel Luke does have level 5 now. As he took these. And Drasir is gonna kill the Viver, and that should put him all the way at level 6. And obviously he'll be ready to go after the next ones. Uh, on top of everything. Healing Totem? What? Okay, that is very interesting. Surely he'll pick up a Raj. He's got 4 points. Exploding? Maybe he'll get the exploding boys. Okay, we're up to four stone halls, so that's where all the stone went. Plus the uh, extra upgrading areas.
Is he gonna go to level 7 from here? Oh my god. Takes a huge freeze. Guess that's cool. Yeah, healing totem helping the little boys a uh, little bit. Oh my god, that healing is so slow. What? How can that be so slow? It's such a small aura as well. Oh man, that's unfortunate. There's a lot of moon silver here in the middle. Okay, Drasir has totem infusion. As long as he's nearby, they'll be better. He did pick up Barrage. Uh, he's got healing totem too. Flaming totem too. I'm not quite sure what the difference is. Uh, lifespan. What? Well, let's see how that heal is now. Okay, that's a lot better. 20, 20 hit points every 2 seconds or so. No, 30. Scorching Vibrant gonna do some damage there. Fire Totem at 50 magic damage. Sorry we're not focusing on Rebeluk, but this is interesting and we never see this, so... Yeah, I have to take a look. Sentries don't yet have their ability. Uh, okay, let's do check out though, what Rebeluk has. So this is the same little hit squad from earlier. He's got seven hunters now up in the top. He was trying to go after the the stuff up there, but there's no Vyvern anymore. So you'll have to just take this out. Um, so the fire totem, not very strong obviously, but gets like a 50 health increase. Gets wrecked very quickly. He's got a ton of bases now. Um, a lot of these are scouting posts though, but there are some frontier posts. No fortified yet. Uh, in the north, he's taken the iron mines, so that's very, very nice. And Drasir just gets all of the Vyverns. That's insane. You shouldn't be able to do that. He's got a ring of notification, two rings of notification, actually, as well as the shielding amulet and the focus ring. So he can decide what to do with that. Barrage hits a lot of the hunters in the back. Uh, I'm not sure this Totem of Silence actually does anything right now. Okay, there it is. Uh, the range is very, very low. These get very quickly killed as well. Jashiro will have to get out of here as he gets surrounded, but he does have all these items, all that gold, so he can pimp up the Hierophant for sure. So we'll have to see what he gets for Rebeluk. He's not been to the shop either yet, but he's got 7k gold. I mean, they're still the big boy. So both players could go after the Tempest Golem if they want some extra money and levels. Okay, Drasir is shopping. He got himself the armor and two proficiency potions. He's not getting the weapon. Very interesting. Shielding amulet is now equipped, and yeah, he's got the two notification items as well. Oh, uh, that makes for 40, right? That's 30. Yeah, 40. So these stack. The notification rings do stack. One of the only rings that do, actually. <laughs> uh, there's not many that do. Okay, we're gonna have to pause here, because this is getting laggy for some reason. Uh, meanwhile, we can take a look at the state of things. The sharpshooter stance is coming in for just here. Uh, there's currently only stone halls, so no balloons being produced at all. And Rebeluk will be going after the the golem. Yeah, this pause is actually nice now, because we can just take a look. Uh, the farms are needed now, as the hunt is expiring in the main base. But some bases still have hunts, so Rebeluk should be upgrading those bases soonish. Uh, this is probably not the best farm location, but anyway. It's got a bit of a float. Why not? Right, going after that Tempest Golem, there's a lot of Brutes actually in this, as many as there are Hunters. Which is very, very interesting. Uh, should be able to take this guy down, uh, and then just come up here and potentially retake the base. 
Frontier Plus is trying to upgrade itself and repair, but it's not gonna work. Golem is more important anyway. Uh, he's got enough iron. <laughs> this knockdown does like no damage. So funny. Okay, let's see what item Revolute gets. Uh, that's a cooldown? Yeah, cooldown reduction. Okay, but Josir is coming in, and his sentry sharpshooter stance should be ready momentarily. Yeah, it's underway, and he should have the resources for it, no? No. He doesn't have the iron, really. Is he producing any other units? Here come the earth shapers that I earlier spoke about. Oh, they are already here! That's incredible. So they've got some nice magic damage, which most of the units have negative resistance against here. So that's a, a great choice. And also, I think they can attack now while doing their stance. Although I don't think they've got their upgrade just yet. Yeah. Sometime soon, I hope. We will see that. But the fire totem helping. The uh, totem of sign is not doing too much, though. It, ha it has a very, very short range for this uh, weakening effect. So Drasir has to back off until he has sharpshooter stance. Then he can take a fight. Rebel Luke at 130 population. He's fixed his food problems. And should be able to get this iron base now. Oh, he's actually got the bottom one as well, so... He's overall doing pretty well. Raw meat is going away. He's got some extra buildings. Yeah, he's got a huge float, so time to upgrade all the bases and spam units. The Bound Inferno Golem is out. We've got Chain Lightning 2, we've got Arcane Force 2, we've got Totemic Might 3. We've got Totem of Sparks 2, Healing Totem 2, and Triple Deep Waters. We'll probably see Summoning Totem soon. Uh, Totem of Vex could be fun as well. Interseer is looking to attack over here. Shop Shooter stands almost down, just needs a little bit of iron. How many iron mines? Ooh, he doesn't have the good iron mines. That's a shame. Trying to make more iron mines though. The sentry still don't have their. This is a little bit of an anti timing, I'm afraid. Uh, we can't deploy them. If, if those sentries were deployed, they'd do so much more damage. I don't know about this. Oh, there we go. There we go. Maybe this was good because it got Rebelu close. <laughs> It got one shot! Are you kidding me? What is this? The goblin has been killed as well already. <laughs> What's happening? Just here got out. This is good enough. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, we got 9 brutes, 10 hunters, all the goblins mounted. It seems like a lot of the heavier units have mounted as well. Rebeluke lost like 50 population here. Uh, Josir is on 86. He's lost, I mean, a fair chunk. Especially the Axe Wheelers have died. But he sealed up his boys. And he's making more boys. Still Stone Hall only. Uh, I would like to see a Granite Hall at some point to help push. Um, it would be nice to be able to afford all those things, but I'm pretty sure... He's tier 3. Are you kidding me? Okay, I think he's going for for the um, Pyromancers then. Nope, it's Berserkers for now. I I'm sure he'll he'll switch that up eventually. Oh my god, he's went tier free. That was such a good fight as well just a moment ago. Uh, level nine, by the way, and a thousand extra health has been picked up. Probably through those potions. Uh, no weapon yet, but could afford it. Could afford a hammer as well, I suppose. This is a good build, though. Um, would like to see some concentration for those totem spams, though. That would be very nice. What's the cooldown on these? 30 seconds? That's very long, yeah. If you, if you could somehow get concentration free, you can drastically reduce that. This is gonna be a border fortress. It's the first one, I think. Nope, he's got one here. More charred burners added. Oh, another another one. 
Uh, he has to transition to farms now. That could be a problem as the Dwarven economy isn't that great once you are on farms. But he still has some hunt here and there. So it's not the complete end of the world. Okay, we've got a fight up north. Once again, the sentries are deployed. The Earth Shapers now have their upgrade and increase the resistances of our boyos. Berserkers are here. They can also do their Warcry stance uh, or ability. Border Fortress is repairing. Drasir is at 146 population, whereas Revoluk is at 100. I'm not sure he's doing too well here, to be honest. Drasir seems to be holding this solidly enough, although the... Numbers are being thinned out for the sentries. The hunters are doing pretty well against them, but there's a flank coming in. And Jasir should be able to deploy the extra sentries that have arrived. The healing the Hierophant has 3050 health. He keeps healing. Uh he keeps healing her. He, she keeps spamming the totems as well. Uh, dies in the end, but I mean all of these orc units are getting pretty low in number. There's a war troll now as well, but the border fortress should be dealing some decent damage to it as it doesn't have any uh, magic resists. Uh, Goblin doing chain lightnings on the sentries, which is pretty brutal as well. Will just here be able to hold his base against the war trolls? That's the big question, really. Uh, sentries are slowly but surely dying. It looks like the orcs have persevered. But at what cost? Rebeluk is down to 70 population. Jasir still at 60 and should be able to uh, remake his army. Berserkers are coming in. I think he's held this long enough. Oh, the boost it was smelter is such low HP actually. Only 2500 total. I did not know that actually. That is very weak. Especially for a dwarven building. I mean, look at the boost might as well. 1200, what's going on? <laughs> Even the Iron is stronger. Got a Bound Inferno Golem summoned. And just here, I'm sure, will be trying to focus down the War Troll. No. Wait, we've got War Riders coming in. They got 30 attack. Rebeluk in the background has been getting his upgrades. Uh, well, actually, he is getting his upgrades now. These are This is the other upgrade uh, from... No, where is the... Oh, it's Empowerment? No way, what is this? How come they're 30? I don't understand. Anyways, the border fortress should be falling now uh, with the extra war troll in, but the Hierophant doing her best to keep this going. Barrage is down the army, but um, it doesn't do that much damage. Not this time around. Just here probably wants more of these sweet brute force points. That was a long, extended fight at that base. Just here suddenly at minus 70 food, so that's not good. Uh, he needs to populate these farms. Oh, the workers, man. Okay, he found it, actually. Uh, but he's making a granite hole rather than fixing his farms. Okay, this is upgrading to Border Fortress. Very important. There's more moon silver mines and smelteries down here. So that's nice. Yeah, Josir will need a few more farms if he wants to keep this going. Although no doubt he's got a huge queue. <laughs> which is why he's so heavily in the negative. Earth Shapers, Berserkers. Uh, and the Berserker Magic upgrade is coming in. That's going to be a nice addition as Revoluk's army. Like I said, pretty much everything Orc is bad against magic damage. It's They've got such heavy uh, reductions in uh, to the magic resists. We got the Grand Karak, of course, because that's where you get the war trolls from, as well as border fortresses. Oh, actually, from fortified outposts, you can. We can make shamans now, so should be seeing some of that soonish. Potentially a Titan could be happening. By the way, Summoning Totem has been picked up as well, but we've got a fight. Let's see what happens there. My god, my game is on 28 FPS. This map is too much. We got a ton of Pyromancers in the back. 
that should be the way to do this. And with the Berserkers also having magic damage and the protective auras from the Earth Shapers, I think Drasir is doing a great job there. Very, very cool game so far. Oh my god, I'm so entertained. A lot of units have got very low health, however. So he's gotta watch out for that. Yeah, Revoluke will have to make the Shaman Passer combo soon. Because this ain't gonna work. Shamans are coming out. Got Shaman Hearts. And the Warpit is done with every upgrade. But we still got a lot of Frontier Posts. Hopefully no more Scouting Posts, that would be not good. Yeah, he's gotta upgrade those. So this upgrade is not done yet, but it's cute. Uh, I wonder where the roots are being gathered from. Needs some black ash, obviously. Some blood forge. Uh, there's here attacking in the middle. He's not gonna wait. Holy shit, he's maxed out. Are you kidding me? He's going through the bridge. Thirteen berserkers, ten earth shapers in the normal stance, I think. Nope, nope, those are all doing their aura. We've got the enrage from the Berserkers. We should receive the ploy from the sentries as well. Oh, they, they have it. There we have it. Sheer Sting at 200 population. Revoluke rapidly falling in population 170. Uh, but he's got some splash damage. Ooh, the goblin has been sniped. Golem sniped. And Revoluke suddenly has nothing in the middle. Has to retreat. Just Gobo, Scoundrel, uh, Pesterers. Yeah, he has to sack the space. It's not gonna be held. Well, a healing totem would be nice on these. You have a lot of health, but only goes so far. Sure has some stuff everywhere. Bit of a shame that the Earth Shapers have no innate resistance. Uh, you that would be cool. Oh yeah, here we go. We've got a tunnel. I'm curious how many tunnels there are. Uh, wonder if they show up on any of the text structure tabs. No. It's actually unfortunate. Uh, the granite halls are working on combat balloons, by the way. I still would like to see a few fire golems. Did he buy anything else? Not yet. It's level 10, so... Sure, certainly has the money. That's very goblin heavy. What happened here? Only five shamans. This is gonna melt. Uh, Revolu can... The best way to use this is to send goblins everywhere and pick off a few resource buildings. Farms especially. Uh, you, you can't right-click attack. Oh my god, Shear is making a titan! Are you kidding me? He just needs to come back here. Oh, this is so important to hold now. He, he definitely has the money for it. Upgrading this to a border fortress. Almost done. So that will gain a lot of health, but I don't think it's nearly enough to get the titan out. Oh, wh wh why isn't Trasir teleporting back? I think he, he thinks he can take the game. Oof. But that is a big loss. He's even had the tunnel there. Imagine if he teleported back down, but... and got the Titan out. That would be so sick. In addition to a 200 population Dwarven army, but anyway, Revoluk is not on a, on a very high population count, and the balloons even have fire! Uh, somewhat negating that heal from the totems. Both of them blow up, however, so that didn't do too much. 
They tried to help. Rebeluk at 100 population, Josir at 190. Did he even lose anything? No, he lost a lot of units actually, but he's reproducing them like a boss. And the Border Fortress is starting to struggle. Holding this, it's not going to. So Rebeluk will have to come up with something and fast. Except it doesn't involve a lot of wood. He's got a lot of black ash. He's got 27 idle workers. That is not good. Drasir only has 6 in comparison. That's the kind of numbers you want to see. I, the round number you really want to see is 0, but yeah. <laughs> 2 points are still left for Drasir. Why hasn't he spent them? Would be nice to just add to the damage or something. Or the cooldowns, actually. Cooldowns would be nice. <laughs> 130 population. This is gonna be so hard. Revoluk just doesn't have the basis for this. Oh, the balloons! Just flying through the base. Who cares? It's fine. Oh, they're gonna kill the base. That's fine as well. <laughs> no, they can't kill the base. They're actually uh, zero resistance, so outpost hurts them a lot. Either way, this is toast. Sheer 200 population. Increase focus for the shapers. That might be nice. Certainly has the cash. It's got the coin. Titan for... Nah, <laughs> not happening. So Revoluk remaxed. And this time he's got Viverns, uh, a much higher tech army. Seriously, much higher. Still Scoundrels though, I don't like it. He's gotta get rid of the Scoundrels somehow. Well, let's see what these can do. Balloon numbers are very high, the sentries are not yet deployed. Vortros are knocking down some of the Berserkers, the fire comes down, oh my god. A lot of the units have melted, uh, but Drosir takes a totem hit and has to get out in the end. He's lost a lot of units too. The Shamans have done their job. Drosir down to 130 population, has to go for some heavier units. For sure. Yeah, the Wyvern uh, also worked with the Pesterer's oiled thing. So when something is oiled, you, you also get ignited, which is extra 50 magic damage per second, so... This army is serious business. Of course, the Shamans have this too. This is a full army. Six War Trolls now. And should be able to retake the space. That's a lot of farms, so very valuable for Rebeluk for sure. He needs those resources. I could recycle things like the war pit. Even the forge. Uh, actually, the building HP would be nice to have. Yeah, he's recycling them now. Good choice, good choice. Uh, we've got tribe totems down here. That's what we've seen in the last fight. Uh, using the flame strike. Uh, not the flame strike, actually, but... Uh, was it the fl flame strike? Yeah, it was. It's also loaded with some resources now. Rosir has remade the same army. Let's see if that's a mistake. He's got pyromancers, a lot of them. Wonder if they're gonna be good enough. What can apply oil for these? Seriously, I have no idea. Does this apply oiled? I doubt it. Oh no! The totems! What? They got nearly invulnerable. Jasir's army is absolutely melting here. 
How do you do this near vulnerability thing for the pyromancers? What? I'm actually not sure what I'm looking at, but... Revoluk has dominated this fight. A uh, chat says stasis. Where does it come from? It's not anything here, right? How do you do the stasis? I've actually never seen that before. Well, Rebel Luke is stomping through this now. Oh my god, are you kidding me? There's no holding this, I think. Rebel Luke down to 130 population though. Uh, just here kind of matching it. Ah, he triggered the fire a bit too soon. It doesn't do any damage to these heavier units, unfortunately. It's pretty good at deleting the gobbles, but... That's about it. Would have been better to sit back and use the range. Ah, he's lost a lot of units and... Well, I mean, Revoluk still doesn't have a lot, lot more, but... It's meaningful what he's got here already. Should be able to take over the space without the problem. And I think the tunnel was here as well. Oh god. Rebelu could even work on the Titan if he really wanted to. He does have almost enough resources. He's been upgrading this outpost, so he's getting more iron mines. Uh, this one, he's got it back, obviously, so he can gather iron from there. And there's still a lot in his bottom base. Black Ash Collection has begun a while ago. Should still try to make these work. One more fire attack. <laughs> that boy shooting from up there. That's funny. Ah, the border fortress. What's going on? I don't think Josir is the one doing that. I think it's from the totem like the guys in the chat are saying. That's a great hold. Rebel Luke will have to back off. Yeah, I think it's Zarek's cage like you guys said. Uh, cannot you Stasis, that's it. That's what he's been doing. It's just hard... It, 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 it's hard to tell that it's coming from the totems, but... Yeah, Josir didn't want that, because right after the flame strike hit, so uh, Rebeluk was trying to time that out so that their stasis can't move, and by the time it expires, he would have the flame strike ready. Now, the only thing I don't understand is how pyromancers can benefit from oiled, because I don't think the dwarves can apply oil. That's my big meta question for today. The should be able to take this back without a problem. Very, very tech heavy army for Rebeluk now. Uh, he stopped making the Vibrance actually. Spending a lot of iron on these war trolls. Wonder if that will work out. Yeah, he's making vibers behind it. They're pretty expensive, by the way. Like 10 iron. 15 food. At least food is infinite, but iron, it will run out. And when the resources run out... I'm not sure if the orcs can compete at that point. 
but with Rebeluk having so much more of the map, uh, it's highly unlikely that he'd be the one running out. Hastened could be very interesting on the war trolls. Come on, see some of that. Well, 180 pop to 200. Drosir once again at an advantage. Hopefully, he doesn't use the fire attacks, <laughs> the igniting on the on the totems. Uh, sorry, on the balloons. Good dodges this time. Rebeluk will have to combo that better with the stasis. Oh no, he's going in for the fire attacks again. Oh, it's not going to do anything. What just happened? Everything's blowing up. I think the shamans have started doing their job. I didn't see any pesterers in here though. Oh, there are a few pesterers, so... Yeah, that's gonna help. Uh, Sham is really, really low. Rashir has escaped, but... Is it gonna matter? Is he gonna be able to keep up the iron, basically? That's what I'm trying to ask here. 133 left, 233... Uh, 185. It's out of moon silver here. This is nice. The yeah, iron's gonna be out here. Ah, uh, just is rebuilding the iron mine for it. At least he can recycle it later. Uh, he's made a lot of observation towers around the main to make it extra hard to push. But in the meantime, he should benefit from the farms. But he has got uh, actually like uh, 600 food, so that's not bad. Could put guys into the iron mine, though. Stomp through another base. 24 pyromancers, 6 earth shapers, 18 sentries. See, if he used the sentry range a bit better, I think that would work. Because he always has them a little bit in the front. Uh, like, like kind of like this, like he goes very close, but they actually have insane range. So if you park them way outside, I think he would benefit from that. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any tanks, so it's gonna be hard to deal with the war trolls and stuff. Rebeluk is at 200 population. Oh god, oh god, the stasis comes down. Joshir has to teleport out. Good choice. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I would like to see a few Berserkers. This is gonna be a really long game, I feel, feel like. Ooh, ooh, the Tribe Totem's hitting absolutely everywhere. Another Stasis in the back, so that part of the army is just not working. Now they're back in the fight, it's just, I know the balloons are kinda in the front. A lot of the sentries are still being hit, and the Tribe Totems keep landing shots. Chain Lightning hurts the Pyromancer Shatan. I just don't think Drusir is going to be able to hold this. Uh, even more stasis is coming down. The Frontier Post is definitely toast. But Drusir has a lot of extra stuff coming in. Will he be able to hold the next base? Not gonna lie, I would like to see a few observation towers now. Just to try and hold these. But will he have the stone? I recall seeing Drasir with little stone, that's true. See, so yeah, he'll need some more stone. Uh, there's some here. The workshop should be pretty much done with things. Uh, I wonder if he could do a dropship uh, volcano stance all in on the main. It would be very difficult, especially if there's a teleport ready to go for the orcs, but. But with the teleport bait, I could see it working, like, uh, if Drusir teleports it down here to kill this, force a teleport, and then dropship the north at the same time, that might work. Um, but it will have to be a lot of dropships and a lot of golems in it. Dude, Rebeluk has so many resources still, this is insane, so much iron left. 
It's going to keep this going for a long time. This 400 <laughs> iron down here. Oh my god, these are fully charged. Uh, those are going to miss. Once again, trying to burn these down. Does a little damage. Not too much. All well, the Earth Shapers have activated their auras. But overlapping doesn't make them stack. So that's a little unfortunate. You kind of want to stagger this. It looks like Josir's army is going to be stomped once again. Teleports back to the border fortress. We'll need all the healing you can get. Rebeluk still producing a lot of units behind this, obviously. As soon as his arm units die, he will be popping out more. These fire attacks should be pretty good, but they're not. <laughs> he kind of flies over the army and then gets hit by the air units. And even the war riders can attack up, so... Taking down the balloons, slowly but surely. Both players have relatively even population counts. But as long as the trades are this even, I think that benefits uh, Rebeluk for now. He's got too much off the map. I'm not sure Jasir will be able to hold this for much longer. The, uh, the Shamans are just absolutely wrecking everything. They've got a lot more magic damage than Pyromancers do, and they can be buffed by oil. Whereas Jasir doesn't have a source of oil, which is really unfortunate for Amir. Iofant is still going, but I'm not sure she adds much more value anymore. I'm gonna hit the tree. What did he spend his two points on, by the way? Just brute force. Yeah, not having any cooldown reduction is kind of brutal, not gonna lie. What a great game, though. Okay, where is the Titan? Seriously, it's Titan time. He's got three extra workers. Just put the Titan out. If you're Rebeluk, I think. Uh, he's making a bunch of work so that he can gather enough iron for the next wave. I think even that might be enough to kill a Hierophant. Oh my god. Oh, I'm so close to dead. And actually dead. Rebeluk, I think, has done it now. Josira just doesn't have a, a whole lot of tech resources. He's gonna have to make sentries and axillers again. Got no blue silver, so I mean he can make more pyromancers, but not much more. And they're just not trading evenly. It's it's an inferior unit to the shaman. Even has worse resistances by a lot. Oh my god. Same health, worst attack. Jasir will not be able to hold this base. He might be able to hold his main, however. I'm not sure if Rebelu can see what's in there. Uh, <laughs> It will be tough to attack that, but at the same time, he's like I said, he's got a million resources. He can get a Titan anytime he wants. Still got this going, he's still got this going. Oh my god. Especially if he upgrades these to border fortresses, it's gonna be so hard for Josir to take it back. This can be just a base full of towers. They're weak, but you know, they, they add something. How come there's no Titan? Come on, let's do it. It's totally affordable, look at this. Why do you want Borg Riders? Hell yeah. <laughs> Just here. He's trying to make combat balloons. He's got uh, 18 Earth Shavers. Oh god, he overproduced those. That's for sure. Wait, Rebel Luke has a drummer? I think it died. I died. Twenty-eight 
25 Earth Shapers. What? No, seriously, it is time to consider. Oh god, oh god, the iron's running out. That's right. I oh, just here. Come on. That base, you need. I don't think Rebel Luke wants to go here yet. <laughs> he needs to smash a few other bases first. Yeah, he just realized. Okay. Really needs that base. Fair enough. I uh, teleport here will be important to save the border fortress. I'm not sure he's gonna even bother. Oh, in the back! Holy! Right in the middle of it all. The blues are getting wrecked already. Oh, that's a bad opening. Sure has to keep his army moving. Can't really deploy the sentries like that. They are deployed now. Earth Shapers don't have their auras! And everyone's taking enormous hits. Rebel look at 180 population versus 80. He just mashed this army real good. Holy moly. 48 population. And GG is called by Drasir. The Rebel Luke has taken this. Absolutely savage with that uh, late game orc army. I think Drasir with this composition never had a chance. Maybe with Berserkers he would have uh, done a bit better. I don't know. Rebel Luke's gonna need a minute, which is fair enough. It was a 50 minute game. I would have liked to see a few tunnels, to be honest, as well. Maybe next time. Drusir has another chance here. <laughs> 